Good morning, you guys. Today we are going to be going over chapter six, chemistry and chemical safety out of our foundations black book. Now in the same video today, we will also be going over chapter seven, which is electricity. So I hope that you have your foundations book out and ready to go along with its matching theory workbook so that you guys are able to get your answers for the exam review questions that are on your theory workbook. So like I mentioned just a second ago, we are going to start with chapter six, which is chemistry and chemical safety. I'll give you guys just a second to get your theory workbook out and a pen so that we can start. In your theory workbook, I believe it starts on page 113. 113 on your theory workbook. The first question says, of course, these are all multiple choice. Number one, which of the following is defined as anything that occupies space and has mass, meaning weight? Which of the following is defined as anything that occupies space and has mass? That will be matter, C. And it's on page 154, 154. Matter is any substance that occupies space and has mass. All matter has physical and chemical properties and exists in the form of a solid, liquid, or gas. Number one is C. Number two, there are 118 different elements known to science today. How many of these are naturally occurring on Earth? The answer is 98, 98, and it's on page 154, 154. Right at the bottom, there are 118 elements known to science today. 98 occurred naturally on Earth. There's our answer. Number two is B. Number two is B. Number three. Which of the following are the basic building blocks of all matter? Which of the following are the basic building blocks of all matter? The answer is atoms, atoms, D, page 155. Atoms are the basic unit of matter, which is a nucleus at the center surrounded by a negatively charged electron right there on page 155, page 155. Number four, the letter H stands for the element hydrogen. The letter H stands for the element hydrogen. Number four is A. Number four is A, and it is at the top of page 155 right there, okay, right at the top. Number five, an example of an elemental molecule is the oxygen in air. An example of an elemental molecule is the oxygen in air. Let's look at page 156, right here, you guys. Atmospheric oxygen and other chemical substances such as nitrogen and water vapor make up the air you breathe. Atmospheric oxygen is considered an elemental molecule. Page 156. Number five is D. Number five is D. We're moving along. Number six. As the basic unit of matter, blank cannot be divided into simpler substances by ordinary chemical means. Number six is atoms. As the basic unit of matter, atoms cannot be divided into simpler substances by ordinary chemical means. 
Number six is C. Number six is C and is on page 154. 154. Number seven. Rusting iron and burning wood are examples of a change in what type of properties? Chemical. Chemical. Number seven is A. And we can find it on page 158. Chemical. Chemical properties. Physical properties include color, solubility, odor, density, melting point, boiling point, hardness, and glossiness. Chemical properties are characteristics that can be determined only by a chemical reaction and involve a chemical change in the substance. Examples include the ability of iron to rust, wood to burn, or hair to change color through the use of hair color and hydrogen peroxide, right, developer. So, number seven is A. Number seven is A, chemical. Number eight, an example of a physical change is ice melting to water. Number eight is B. Number eight is B, ice melting to water, and it's on page 170. Right here, right in the middle. Melting ice, an example of an endothermic reaction. Okay, right in the middle. Number eight is B. Number nine, an example of a chemical change is blank. An example of a chemical change is the oxidation of hair color products. The oxidation of hair color products. Number nine is C, and it's on page 169. Page 169 at the top, oxidation reduction, also known as redox. It is a chemical reaction in which oxidation and reduction take place at the same time. When oxygen is chemically combined with a substance, the substance is oxidized. When oxygen is chemically removed from a substance, the substance is reduced. Then it's, talk, it's talking about oxi oxidizing agents, okay? So you guys, number nine is C, number nine is C, and it's on page 169. Number 10, which of the following is an example of a pure substance? Which of the following is an example of a pure substance? Let's look at page 158, okay, 158. Pure substance is a chemical combination of matter in definite proportions. Pure substances have unique properties, water and salt are examples of pure substances, okay? So the answer for number 10 is salt, B. Number 10 is B as in boy. Number 11, blank, also known as alkalis, are com compounds of hydrogen, a metal, and oxygen. Number 11 is bases, bases, also known as alkalis. So number 11 can be found on page 167, 167, okay? Right here, you guys, all alkalis, also known as bases, okay? Number 11 is D, number 11 is D as in dog. Number 12, a solution is a stable uniform mixture of two or more mixable substances that is made by dissolving a solid liquid or gases substance in another substance. So number 12 is C, solution. Number 12 is C, solutions. And it's on page 159, 159 right here. It should already be highlighted with a star, remember, as you guys watch my previous video, okay, remember that anything that I highlight and I put a star next to, it's what's going to help you answer your paper test, okay? You should already have that test, which is your chapter six, also your chapter seven. So if you haven't caught on these little stars, 
It, it's pretty much the answers to the, some of those questions on your test, okay? Also, you will not get a lot of questions out of your chapter six and seven on your state board exam. They will ask a few, okay? We don't know exactly which ones, but it won't be a whole lot of chemistry and electricity, not too much, okay? All right, you guys, let's keep going. Number 13, number 13. So we said number 12 was C. Number 13, which of the following allows oil and water to mix or emulsify by reducing surface tension. Which of the following allows oil and water to mix or emulsify, mix them together, by reducing surface tension? It is a surfactant, a surfactant. 13 is A, and it talks about it on page 161. Surfactants are substances that allow oil and water to mix or emulsify. As such, they're one type of emulsifier. A surfactant molecule has two distinct parts. Okay, so there we have it. 13 is A. Number 14, an example of a water in oil emulsion is a cold cream. It would be a cold cream. That would be an example of one, okay? Cold cream. And you can find it on page 163. Page 163. Number 15, blank are examples of emotions and used in beauty services. That would be shampoos and conditioners. Shampoos and conditioners, okay? So the answer for number 15 is B. 15 is B. Number 16, the tail of a surfactant molecule is lipophilic or oil loving. Lipophilic will be oil loving, you guys. And that's on page 161, 161, right here at the bo bottom. The tail is lipophilic, having an affinity for or an attraction to fat and oils, oil loving, okay? Right at the bottom, page 161, 16 is C. Number 17, nail polish with glitter that can separate from the polish is an example of an or a suspension. Suspension. And it's on page 160. 160. An example of a suspension is the glitter and nail polish, which can separate from the polish. Calamine lotion is another example. There you have it, 17 is D. 17 is D as in dog. Number 18, number 18. Water in oil emulsions feel greasier than oil in water emulsions. Number 18 is A, number 18 is A, and it talks about it on page 163. 163. Number 19. Blank is the ingredient used to raise the pH in hair products to allow the solution to penetrate the hair shaft. That will be ammonia. Ammonia is the ingredient used to raise the pH in hair to allow the solution to penetrate the hair. Number 19 is B. Number 19 is B, and it is discussing it on page 164. Page 164. Number 20. Volatile organic compounds contain blank and evaporate very easily. Number 20 is carbon. Volatile organic compounds contain carbon and evaporate very easily. 
Number 20 is A. Number 20 is A, and it also talks about it on page 164. 164, right over here, you guys, right here, right in this paragraph. What's next? 21, 21. Oxidation, oxidation is the chemical reaction that combines a substance with oxygen to produce an oxide, to produce an oxide. 21 is D, 21 is D, and it's on page 169, okay, 169. So 21 at the top, oxidation, it talks about it. Also known as redox, is a chemical reaction in which oxidation and reduction takes place at the same time, right at the top. So 21 is oxidation D. 22, the pH scale is logarithmic, logarithmic. 22 is B as in boy. Page 166, okay, 166, that's where you can find it, 160, page 166, number 22 is B as in boy, B. 23, a blank charged ion is called an anion, that would be a negatively charged ion you guys so 23 is c 23 is c and it's on page 165 165 okay right over here an ion with a negative electrical charge is an anion okay a positive will be a cation okay so the answer is C, C, 23 is C, a negatively charged ion is called, it's called an anion. 24, the pH scale measures the concentration of hydrogen ions in acidic and alkaline water-based solutions. Water-based, number 24 is D. Number 24 is D, water base. Number 25, what does a pH below seven indicate? It indicates an acidic solution. Anything that is below seven is considered acidic, you guys. So number 25 is C, and it's also on page 166, right in the middle, right here. Acidic solution, okay? 25 is C. 26, the letter PH denote potential hydrogen. That's what it stands for, potential hydrogen, which is the relative degree of acidity and alkalinity of a substance. Also on page 165, 165. Okay, right here, potential hydrogen. 26 is A, 26 is A. Number 27, the non-aqueous solutions such as alcohol or oil do not have pH. They do not have pH, and that's on page 168, okay? 168. Number 28, what is the average pH for hair and skin? It is five. Number 28 is B, 28 is B, and it's on page 167, 167. Right at the top, you guys. Number 29, 29. Acidic solutions tend to harden the hair. Acidic solution tend to harden the hair. Page 167 as well. 
29 is B. 29 is B. And just in case you were wondering, why is there a lot of information about hair and it's talking about nail polish? I'm not, if perhaps you're thinking, I'm not going to be doing any of that. All in all, you guys, this book, the Foundations book, is a standard book for everyone in the beauty industry. So whether you're doing hair, skin, and nails, the information is coming from the same place. So that is why it's mentioning some of these other services in this chapter as well, okay? All right, so 29, we said it was B. 29 is B. And it's on page 167. Question number 30, question 30. Blank refers to either the loss of oxygen or the addition of hydrogen. 30 is reduction. Reduction refers to either the loss of oxygen or the addition of hydrogen. 30 is B as in boy, and it's on page 169, 169. 31, when oxygen is combined with a substance, the substance is oxidized. Also page 169, right at the top, 31 is A, 31 is A, oxidized. 32, oxidation and reduction always occurs simultaneously and are referred to as redox reaction, redox reaction. 32 is redox, C as in cat. And it's also on page 169, right at the top. 33, what type of chemical reaction requires the absorption of energy or heat from an external source for the reaction to actually occur. That will be endothermic. Endothermic, page 170. Endothermic, right here. An endothermic reaction is a chemical reaction that requires the absorption of energy or heat from an external source for the reaction to actually happen, right? To actually occur. So number 33 is A, 33 is A. 34, what type of chemical reaction balances pH and results in the production of water and a salt? That would be acidic alkali neutralization. Page 168, number 34 is B as in born. 34 is B, page 168, right here, you guys. 35, the SDS contains blank categories of information. It contains 16 categories, 16 categories of information. That's on page 174, page 174. 35 is D, 35 is D. Number 36, on a safety data sheet, what category would include routes of exposure, related symptoms, and acute and chronic effects? That will be toxicology information, toxicology information, okay? 36 is C, and it's on page 175. 175. 37. As part of the SDS categories, first aid measures include important symptoms, effects, as well as required treatment. Required treatment. That's also on page 174. Page 174. 37 is B. 37 is B. We're almost there, you guys. 38, on safety data sheet, emergency procedures, protective equipment, and proper methods of containment 
and cleanup are listed as accidental release measures. Accidental release measures. 38 is A. 38 is A. It's on page 175. 39. As part of the SDS categories, handling and storage list precautions for safe handling and storage, including incompatibilities. 39 is A. Also on page 175, 39 is A. Last one. The location you use for mixing chemicals must be well ventilated. It must be well ventilated, you guys. So number 40 is B, and it's on page 173. Page 173, when at the top where it's talking about mixing, okay, mixing chemicals. That is it for the theory question and answer review questions for chapter six, chemistry and chemical safety. We are going to continue with the exam review questions for chapter seven, which is electricity. You are more than welcome to pause the video if you need to take a break and then you can come back and finish off. Ah, you're more than welcome to do that so that you can get the correct answers for electricity and electrical safety. Chapter seven, we're still working out of our foundation's black book. So make sure you keep that out and ready. On your theory workbook, you guys, for chapter seven, electricity and electrical safety, on the theory workbook, it starts on page 129. 129. I'll give you just a second to get that out and ready. Number one says, the movement of electrons from one atom to another along a conductor is called electricity. Electricity, page 184, 184. Electricity, right there. Number one is B. Number one is B. Number two. Electric wires can be covered with a material that does not transmit electricity, such as rubber or plastic coating. This material is known as an insulator. Insulator. It is also on page 184. Insulator. A non-conductor, also known as an insulator, is a material that does not transmit electricity. Okay, so number two is A. Number two is A. Number three. Number three. An apparatus that changes direct current to alternating current is a inverter. Inverter. Page 185. Inverter. Number three is C. Number three is C as in cat. Number four, the term alternating current refers to a rapid or interrupted current flowing first in one direction and then in the opposite direction. Alternating current. Number four is B. Number four is B. And it is also on page 185, right there. Again, it should already be highlighted. Number five, the unit that measures the pressure or force that pushes the electric current forward through a conductor is a volt. It is a volt. Page 186, it is known as a volt. Right up here, you guys. 
Number five is D. Number five is D. Number six, which unit measures the resistance of an electric current? Which unit measures the resistance of an electric current? That will be an OHM A. And that is on page 186, 186. Number seven, the device that prevents excessive current from passing through a circuit is called a fuse. It is called a fuse. And that is on page 187. Number seven is A. Number seven is A. Number eight, a switch that automatically interrupts or shuts off an electric current at the first indication of an overload is a circuit breaker. It is called a circuit breaker. Number eight is C. Number eight is C, and it's right here at the bottom of page 187. Number nine, the negative electrode of an electrotherapy device is called a cathode. It is called a cathode and it's on page 192. 192. Okay. It is a cathode. Number nine is D. Number nine is D. Number 10. Grounding completes an electric circuit and carries the current safely away. Number 10 is B, number 10 is B, and it is discussing it on page 188 at the bottom, okay? 188. Number 11, all of the electrical appliances you use should be UL certified. UL certified, and it talks about it on page 190, 190 at the top. UL certified. Number 11 is B. 11 is B. Number 12. When using galvanic current, the active electrode is the electrode used on the area to be treated. So number 12 is D, galvanic, D, galvanic. And it is on page 193, right in here, where it talks about galvanic current and active electrodes, okay? The active electrode is the electrode used on the area to be treated. The inactive electrode, in the other hand, is the opposite pole from the active electrode. So again, number 12, is D. Number 12 is D as in dog. Number 13, microcurrent can be used to increase muscle toning. You have to remember that. Microcurrent is to stimulate muscle toning, you guys. So 13 is B. 13 is B as in boy. Microcurrent can be used to increase muscle tone and restore elasticity. And it talks about it on page 194, microcurrent, okay? It improves blood circulation. Lymph produces acidic and alkaline reactions, open and closes hair follicles and pores, increases muscle tone, restores elasticity, reduces redness and inflammation, minimizes healing time for acne lesions, improves the natural protective barrier of the skin, and so forth. So there you have it. Number, what, number 14. Number 14. Number 14. A wavelength is the distance between successive peaks of electromagnetic waves. Number 14 is B. Number 14 is B, and it talks about it on page 1. 97. Page 197. B as in boy. Number 15. 
Invisible light is the light at either end of the visible spectrum of light that is invisible to the naked eye. Number 15 is D, and it is talking about the invisible light on page 198. 198, it is where it starts talking about visible spectrum of light, visible light and all of that. Page 199, it continues. So number 15 is D, 15 is D. Number 16, ultraviolet A, UVA, light blank. Ultraviolet A light is often used in tanning beds. It is often used in tanning beds. Okay, right over here, page 199. So number 16 is A. Number 17. Catalysts are substances that speed up chemical reactions. Page 200, a catalyst, right here. Chemical reactions, so 17 is A. 17 is A. Number 18, constant and direct current that has a positive and negative pole and produce chemical changes when it passes through the tissues and fluids of the body is known as galvanic current. Galvanic current. 18 is A, and it's on page 193, where it's talking about galvanic current. So again, number 18 is A. Number 19. Microcurrent is the answer for number 19. Microcurrent is an extremely low level of electricity that mirrors the body's natural electrical impulses. Number 19 is microcurrent. B as in boy, 19 is B. And it is on page 194, page 194. Number 20. The thermal or heat producing current with a high rate of oscillation or vibration that is commonly used for scalp and facial treatment is called Tesla high frequency current. Tesla high frequency current. Number 20 is D and it is talking about high frequency on page 195 right in this paragraph at the bottom. 20 is D. 21, for safety use, no more than one plug in each outlet, okay? The answer for 21 is A. 21 is A, and you can find that information on page 190. Page 190. 22. The application of UV light must be done with the utmost care in a proper manner by a qualified professional because overexposure can lead to skin damage and cancer. So 22 is B, 22 is B, and it is discussing it on page 199. Number 23. The unit that measures how much electric energy is being used in one second is a watt. It is a watt and it's on page 187. So these are the type of questions that I do see them asking you on your state board exam. Like what is OHM? What is a watt? What is a volt, for example? What is an ampere? those type of questions. So a lot of the terminology, again, do not ignore the glossary. And if you need to make flashcards for some of these terms, start now. Do not wait until you're very close to graduating. Start now, you guys. So number 23 is C as in cat. 23 is C. And it's on page 187. 187 at the top, okay? 24. 
If you see sparks when plugging or unplugging an appliance, do not use the appliance or outlet until approved, okay? So 24 is B, 24 is B as in boy. That's on page 191. 25, 25, electric current refers to the flow of electricity along a conductor. So 25 is C, current. 25 is C. And it's on page 184, page 184. 26, which of the following is considered a good conductor? That will be tap water, tap water. And that's on page 184, okay? It's right here, you guys. It says, okay, so pure distal water is a poor conductor, but the ions usually found in ordinary water, such as tap water or a river or a lake, make it a good conductor, okay? So again, number 26 is D, 26 is D, 27. You should disconnect an appliance by pulling on the plug, pulling on the plug. You should disconnect an appliance by pulling on the plug. 27 is C and it's on page 190. Let's see, 190. Disconnect all appliances when not in use. Pull on the plug not the cord to disconnect. So there you have it, okay? That is for, again, question number 27. It is C. 27 is C. 28. You should not touch metal while using an electrical appliance. 28 is B, metal. You should not touch metal while using an electrical appliance, okay? 28 is B as in boy. 29, 29. Iontophoresis is the process that introduces water-soluble products into the skin. It is called iontophoresis, and it is on page 193. 193, iontophoresis, right there. 29 is A, 29 is A. 30, which light rays are blocked by the ozone layer? They will be the UVC rays, UVC rays, and that's on page 199, okay? UVC ray light is blocked by the ozone layer. 30 is C, 30 is C as in cat. 31, within the visible spectrum of light, violet has the shortest wavelength and red has the longest. So 31 is B and that is also on page 198. 31 is B. 32, what light is known as cold light or actinic light? That will be called ultraviolet, ultraviolet, also on page 199, 199. Okay, right here, you guys, right there, okay? So 32 is D, 32 is D, 33. Direct current is produced by chemical means. Direct current is produced by chemical means. Let's look at page 185. 185. Yep, so direct current, abbreviated as DC, is a constant even flow current that travels in one direction only and is produced by chemical means. So there you have it, 33 is B, 33 is B. 34, an appliance rated at 12 amps 
must have a cord that is twice as thick as one rated for six amps. Otherwise, the cord might overheat and start a fire. So 34 is C. 34 is C and it's on page 186, okay? And it's right at the top. 35. The electricity in your house is measured in kilowatts. 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 That's on page 187. 187, right there. 35 is A. 36. A GFI is designed to detect currents of few milliampere and trip a breaker at the receptacle or at the breaker panel to remove shock hazard. So again, 36 is B. 36 is B and it's on page 189. 189. Okay, right there. And also here, this is where it starts to talk about it, GFI. 37, 37. Which of these is not a modality used in beauty and wellness services? Well, we do use high frequency current, we do use microcurrent, and we do use galvanic current. So number 37 is C, integrated current. 37 is C, that is not a modality that we use, you guys. So 37 is C. 38, anaphoresis softens tissue. Anaphoresis softens tissue. That's on page 194. Page 194, anaphoresis softens tissue. Okay, right at the top. So 38 is A, 38 is A. 39, remove lint from clothes dryer before each load to reduce the chance of fire. 39 is B, 39 is B as in boy. All right, you guys, we made it to the end. Number 40, when should you seek medical care after an electrical shock? When should you seek electrical care after an electrical shock? It is talking about it on page 192, okay? 192. And it will be if you are pregnant. If you are pregnant, you want to seek medical care right after, okay? All right, you guys, so number 40 is D. Number 40 is D. So that concludes these two chapters, okay? We did chapter six, chemistry, chapter seven, electricity. And we just went over the exam review questions that are in your theory workbook. I hope that you found those helpful and kind of help you get you through those two chapters a little bit quicker. I always say this, remember that you can use this information to study with later as you start to prep for your state board written test. All of this will serve as very, very helpful study material. So please do not ignore it and make sure that you are doing everything that I have you do. I do know and I understand that it is a lot of reading, a lot of writing. I did tell you about it when you first started. And you guys, this is just going to help you be able to pass this test and not struggle okay so just bear with me we're getting through it together and you'll be just fine i promise okay so that concludes today's class if you guys have any questions you obviously do know how to reach me all right i hope you enjoy the rest of your day hope all is well remember to keep going keep growing i'll see you guys soon and i'll see you on my next video bye guys